True mental toughness is the ability to keep taking action when all hope seems lost. Welcome to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we'll be discussing leadership, business, human potential, inspiring you to live rich from the inside out, Unlock your creativity, stretch out of your comfort zone, break through your barriers, take inspired action, and achieve epic results. Now here's your host, three-time best-selling author, speaker, and certified executive coach, Deborah Kozowski. Hello, everyone. I'm Deborah Kozowski, your host of The Millionaire Woman Show. I am excited that you're here. Today, I wanted to talk about, are you stressed out? And is it time to regain balance? Are you feeling stressed, overwhelmed, or even burnt out? Stress and burnout are two different things. And here's the thing, we all experience stress. There are some stressors that hit us harder than others because our perception is our reality. And what is stressful for one person, another person may not feel it is stressful. And we hit the point of being stressed when we feel like we can't manage what is going on in our lives. So when we talk about stress, stress is the feeling of being overwhelmed, unable to cope with mental or emotional pressure. It also affects our body's responses, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And stress causes chemical changes in our bodies. Now it can raise blood pressure, heart rate, blood sugar levels, and it can also lead to feelings of frustration, anxiety, and even depression. Now there is good stress and there is bad stress. Good stressors put a little bit of pressure on us. They inspire us. They motivate us to get things done. They give us that boost of energy. They improve our moods and we can even notice it in our own performance. So just some examples of good stress. And remember, when I say good stress, some people could view it as bad stress. So examples of good stress can include winning the lottery. For some that might be stressful because all of a sudden they have all this money and they don't know what to do with it. And I can hear you right now. (laughs) on the other end saying, but I would sure know what to do with it if they didn't know. Uh, Winning a deal, getting a promotion, having a child, getting married, going on vacation, buying a house or a new vehicle. These are all good stresses. Whereas bad stress, you feel like your energy is drained. You feel like the life is sucked out of you. And this type of stress can be harmful, especially when it's something that's prolonged and leads to a chronic stress. It increases that blood pressure, as I mentioned. Anxiety can cause depression, poor concentration, and it affects your performance in a bad way. And you notice this in having some declined results. Now, examples of bad stress are job loss, death of a friend or family member, divorce, marriage, or injury. There is a sense of loss often with those things. These stressors can have you in doubt about your capability and having you ask yourself all of those what ifs. What if this happens? What if that happens? And there's that fear of loss, even inadequacy. And some of the symptoms that people experience as stress include insomnia, headaches, frequent colds, constantly worrying, racing thoughts, forgetfulness, trouble focusing. Those were a few of the ones that we mentioned earlier. And the inability to focus, like I mentioned. Now, stress here and there in our lives is not bad. However, when it gets to chronic stress, that prolonged stress that impacts us physically, spiritually, emotionally, I remember when my kids were small, we were on our way to a Valentine's Day party. I had a brand new van that was maybe three weeks old and I was driving down one of the main roads. And I was determined that I was gonna get there on time. I was focused. I had to take one child to one end of the city, another one to the other end. And as I was driving, 
I was waiting for this car to just Jeep to pull over and it never seemed like he was pulling over. And I was so distracted, kept, you know, looking over my shoulder and all of a sudden, wham, I hit a road sign. Yeah, <laughs> not proud of it, but I hit a road sign and my whole world stopped. The kids were silent. They kind of just looked at me waiting to see my response. And I sat there and I cried. I thought about, okay, I was only waiting for that person to pull over or allow me in. Didn't happen. What I could have done is just went down another block or two and went around, which would have taken me longer and I wouldn't have got there on time. And as it was, I never got there on time. I wanted everything to stay normal. I called my brother to take my kids to make sure they got to their Valentine's Day party so everybody's world wouldn't be disrupted. And I had phoned my father and he said, Deb, you sure you don't got enough on your plate? Just hearing him say those words got me to pause, to realize, you know, I wasn't being marked or judged for being on time. And if I was, so what? I needed to get somewhere safely. That was the most important part. Now I had damage to a vehicle that was brand new and not now, now not so much brand new. I was embarrassed, I was shamed. All of these emotions came up, but it also gave me an opportunity to reflect on my dad's words. And I still wanted to keep it all together. And it's, isn't it something when we have a stressor in our lives, how we flounder and we want to keep everything in place and we want everything to look to the world that we're still got it all together. Well, in that moment, I had nothing together. I, you know, it was emotional. Luckily, a city worker stopped and, you know, helped me and saw that I was distressed. I was so worried about the vehicle and the response I was going to have and what I could do about it. And my brother came and, you know, he took the kids exactly where I needed them to be. And just for some of the time, I felt like I had some control. And I think when it comes to our stressors, that we feel that out of control feeling and our minds want to, or feel like they're hijacked. So we go into flight because we want to protect ourselves that safety. But knowing that this stressor could be teaching me something and with all things in life, we have the ability to a responsibility, which means we have the ability to respond or react to a situation. And what truly matters most is having the awareness when stress shows up. When I look at that period of time, I was trying to be all things to all people, making sure the house was perfectly clean, the kids were dressed well, the lunch bags were packed, and I was trying to get from one end to another all by myself, no assistance. And I didn't realize maybe the impact that it could have on other people. I was just in control of making this machine work. And it did work until it didn't work. And this is where we build on some of the resilience that we have. And this is where we can reach out for help. And now this whole podcast and this video is not to meant to replace any, um, give you any medical advice or anything like that. Um, no legal advice, not here for that. I'm here to share my own experiences when I do these solo podcasts to help you move through life so you can step into your full capacity, step into your potential of who you can become. And I know these little adversities that I have had have taught me many things and they've helped me grow in many ways. And I want you to look at your own. When I share my stories, I want you to think about those stories of crisis or chaos or events in your life that can be similar in nature or times where you pulled through and you had to look at things a different way. Now, what matters most, like I said, is how you become aware that stress shows up in your life and how it shows up for you. 
Now, one of the biggest things, and <laughs> this is something that I'm in process of you always working through, is when you feel an emotion, what's the first instinct? We want to bottle it down. We want to hold it in, be so composed. But sometimes we just need to go away into a quiet space and sit with that emotion. Learn what that emotion is telling you. Your emotions are a compass and they are a guidance system telling you what's working, what's not. Because often when we have experiences of disappointment, jealousy, anger, we're frustrated. And often what is being said is, I'm disappointed with the how things are turning out and I want them to be different. Have you had something like that happen to you? Fabulous. Now you have something to work with. Because when you're just sitting in the emotion, which I really encourage you to do is to feel it, count to 10, to process and let yourself move through that emotion. Count to 10, allow that emotion for at least 90 seconds to pass through you. And then ask yourself this question. What is this emotion attempting to tell me? When I pay attention to this emotion, what it's telling me is when it's a negative or painful emotion that there's something I want different. And this gives me an opportunity to make an informed choice. I might need some preparation. I might need to resource other people, give myself some time, but then I have something to work with. So I want to go through some ways of coping with stress if you're experiencing stress because everyone has different coping mechanisms and I'll share a few of my own. Unhealthy ways though are the addictions, the smoking, the drinking, the gambling, the porn, anything that you use as an escape. There's one thing to, as an example, one thing to watch television, to watch a show or two, or you maybe binge watch the on occasion, but when you use it as an escape from your life, that is an unhealthy way of coping. When you just get drawn into the big black box. So the other things are yelling, getting angry at people, um, destroying things, avoidance, going into your kind of shell. Those are unhealthy ways of dealing with stress. Now, let's shift to talking about healthy ways to deal with stress. These are the ones I like the most. And sometimes I need a reminder from family, friends, a sticky note on my mirror. But healthy ways to cope is basically giving yourself that me time that self-care that you hear about. And it's really simple things. Meditation, prayer, could be journaling, could be a digital detox. And I recommend it highly that you go for several hours or even a day or two without having connection to social media and the internet and being drawn to these influences that affect how you feel. People don't really pay attention that a single post can throw them off their day or someone's words, or something that just influenced their thoughts and how they're feeling about the world and their capabilities of what they can do about it can throw people off track completely. So my favorite is of course exercise. If you've been on my stories and you've been on some of my posts, you see that I tap into fitness and exercise as a way of my way of coping with stresses and also to take care of myself. Um, eating healthy foods. You know, sometimes it's like someone's having a bad day. Give me the carton of ice cream and give me a spoon and let's sit down and watch a movie. So these are things that can become a bad habit to catch into that every time that you deal with something that you want to avoid or numb those feelings that you resort to food or alcohol or gambling or smoking, that these are ways of helping you cope with stress. So choosing these healthy choices, having healthy foods and snacks around the house, staying hydrated, making sure that you are drinking water, and most of all, getting a good night's sleep. You know what it's like to be around someone who 
doesn't get enough sleep, they're the grumpiest person around. And you want to steer clear or tell them to go take a nap because you, who is full of energy, can be pulled into that negative energy as well. So being mindful of the energies that you are being around. Now, everyone's perception of a situation and circumstance is different. And what is stressful for one person, again, may not be stressful for another. So most of all, be kind to yourself. We all experience stress and you're not alone. But, but I know when you're in the midst of stress, it often feels like it. But when you start reaching out to others and have some of those deeper vulnerable conversations and connecting with people that you trust to share, that connection helps you come alive. It helps you realize that you're not alone and other people are experiencing, if not the same, something similar in an area of their lives as well. No one is without challenge or stress. It all shows up differently in how we decide to roll with it, I guess, is how some people say it. But then when it comes to burnout, Burnout is a state of emotional and physical mental exhaustion. This is when we have stress to access, prolonged stress, and it occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and you're unable, no longer can, unable to un fulfill the demands around you. Now, keep in, keep in mind though, Burnout is not something that's gonna happen overnight. It is a gradual process. It compounds over time of all of these stressors piling up and it's just like the straw that broke the camel's back. It just added up so much or people have been pushing down their emotions and then finally poof, it explodes. So I want you to really take a step back. You know, if you're starting to notice someone else who may be experiencing burnout. Maybe they're not eating or you're seeing that they're reactive, they're withdrawn, you know, feel hopeless, powerless, disengaged. You want to get help. Get help. Talk to someone. Pay attention to what goes on and how you spend your time. Some people who get into burnout, they have unrealistic expectations in their workplace. They're constantly working long hours and not having that, what we call regaining the balance of doing things that recharge them, rejuvenate them and bring them life. Now, when we think about bringing life or the times we come alive, are you having a chance to socialize with friends? Are you exercising to take care of your body? Are you getting that good night's sleep? Are you taking care of yourself? And are you doing work that's meaningful to you? Now, burnout is really a disconnection to yourself. So what I want you to do in thinking about burnout or even thinking the stressors, if you're starting to see that your stressors are getting compounded, and you think, man, you know what? I don't know what burnout feels like, but I think I might be getting there. Please reach out to someone, a medical professional, um, a trusted friend. You do not have to go through anything alone. And like I said, this podcast is not medical advice. Um, it's not legal advice of any kind, but it is to help give you those tips and strategies of what you can do so that you have some resources in place to deal with a number of the things that goes on in our lives. Now, I wanna to talk to you about three things that you can be doing. So when it comes to stress, reframe the situation. Like I said, some people see stress as a good thing or a bad thing. And when you have a negative stressor, what it's telling you is to pay attention you have an ideal of, in mind of what would be better. So take a step back, jot down some notes for yourself of how could this situation be better? What is it outcome that I truly want? And then think about what can I do? What would be one step forward I can do to move into that space. What is my ideal? So reframe your current situation of whatever stressor is. So maybe you're working long hours. 
and it's exhausting. How can you break up those long hours with something that you enjoy to an bring some aliveness back to who you are. Can you go for a walk around the block at lunchtime or go for a walk with a friend or be able to fit in those things of socializing that recharge you and get you excited about life? The biggest thing is reconnection. Once you reframe, you want to be able to reconnect because life is about relationships. And often when those stressors are occurring, it's because we're disconnected from those people that we find to have those meaningful conversations who engage with us, who see our value, appreciate us. So you need to feel that connection to others. Relationships are so important, especially when it comes to having stressors show up in your life. It's like the mom, stay at home mom raising her kids and not having any adult contact. Um, adult conversation and I used to joke around when my kids were little I used to pack them up and take them to the Y and we'd go swimming we'd go to gym and swims we would do all these activities why so not only can they play with other kids and socialize but it was for me to meet other moms other people so that I could keep that socialization connection for myself also, if you're new to a new city, join a club, join a social event, or go out to a park or other things where you can get involved and get to meet people. Our social connections help us feel embraced in community. Uh, we recharge. And then if you're someone who likes to recharge alone as well, you can have that time of togetherness, but also that individuality as well. Now, finally, is reprioritize. Take a look at what you have been having as your priorities on your list. Then I want you to look at the list and think, how can you fit in those things that help you recharge, that help you come alive in who you are? Because when you bring that factor to the table in your work life, family life, your organization, your leadership, wherever you are, that overspills to other people. And I just wanted to make sure that you understand that you are valued, you are appreciated, and you are adequate. But it is not sustainable to push yourself and not have those moments of recharge along the way. It's just like your cell phone. If you don't recharge it or, you know, give it its extra juice power, it's gonna it's gonna be dead and you can't use it. So really thinking about the phone as an example of what helps you recharge. Is it going to the gym? Is it sitting down to a healthy meal or being able to just cook or entertain and do things that make you feel amazing? So when it comes to regaining balance, when it comes to getting unstressed, take a step back, take a big breath, and allow that breath to disrupt or interrupt that thought process of racing thoughts or thinking that you have so much to do and just take a few more deep breaths. Deep breathing is a fabulous way to cope with stress. And as you do that, you will start feeling more in control, not a forced control, but a self-assured control of where you're going, what you wanna do, and you're gonna be able to conquer amazing things. So time to outstress, regain your balance, and choose healthy ways of managing stress. Thank you for joining me here on The Millionaire Woman Show. Now, if you'd like to learn more about me, please go over to www.debrakazowski.com. You can always still get your free gift of a three-part video course called Making Habits Stick where you can build focus and consistency into those habits to reach those goals and dreams. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the bell, subscribe. And if you're on your favorite podcast player, well, you know the drill. Subscribe, rate and review, and share this with your friends. I would also love for you to just take a snapshot of the episode you're listening to, jot down a few points of what nuggets you're taking away, and uh, share it with your family and friends. You never know whose life you're about to change. As Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. 
And my wish for you as always is go out and make today great.